A much different scene from earlier where we saw protesters all on this bridge. You were one of the organizers for the protesters today, correct, Frank? Tell me, how long were you actually on that bridge? Well, we was on the bridge some hours, about three hours. For three hours? Yeah. And why, why so long? Because we had to get our point across. We had to get our point across. We, we want justice. We're on the corner of Madison and 2nd where you can see protesters are sort of dispersing now, but there are still people out here. So again, lots of police officers and sheriff's deputies in the street right now trying to keep everyone safe. A large crowd of some, well, 40 or so people out here are protesters, lots of police officers and sheriff's deputies wearing heavy gear. So either we're going to split up or we're going to stay together. But so you don't really know where you're going unity. right now. We're, we're in unity right now. We're, okay. we're sticking together. That's what we're doing. Any idea how much longer you all will be out here? Uh, we plan on coming back tomorrow, look like having a group meeting. Or... What does this mean for you and your children? It's disturbing to me that here we are dealing with the same type of issues that my great-grandparents and grandparents have dealt with. What's your message? Our message is we want justice. Police are threatening to arrest people if they do not separate. God, he was the man of that house. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. And again, to be clear here, Connor Schilling has not been charged. And let me ask you just, people are asking, why are you all at Graceland? It may be pretty obvious for some folks, but why are you all at Graceland? Well, Graceland is donated to White Haven. Nothing but Elvis Presley stuff. Come on. Most of their community is, what, 85% 85, 85 black? And four suspects are behind bars and facing charges after an attack streamed on Facebook Live. The victim is home now recovering after he was tortured for hours and his family has some powerful words after what happened. We just got this new picture of Artavius Brown. That shooting happened on Sunday in this parking lot. So here's some background now about the case. Darius Stewart was killed back on July 17th of 2015. Oh, it's fine, but the snow, I don't do snow oh, no, now. No, no, we can't. <laughs> Say snow around here. <laughs> do that. Check out his two page rap sheet. He's well known to police. What's your words to customers? Yeah, first thing I, I could do for the company is apologize. It turns out I found out there really is no clear social media policy in place. An image so hard to see. Seven caskets side by side. Friday, a father and son was left to bury his mother and children following a South Memphis house fire. What happened in Orlando is truly a tragedy impacting people all across the country and even right here in the midst. South. We've learned the cause of fire is a faulty cord here. Those men walked inside the store and stole several mobile devices. It's been quite a day, an emotional day, a tough day. After nine people were killed, six were children. Beautiful day, good weather. Thank you all for beginning your day with us. We'll see you right here on WMC Action News 5 at 5 and 10 o'clock. Have a good day. New tonight, a discrimination lawsuit filed against the Memphis Police Department by one of its own. Good evening, I'm Joe Birch. And I'm Conti Anthony. After more than a decade on the force, one officer says he's sick of being harassed for how he looks, how he worships, and most of all, who he loves. And our Jerry Askin was the first to break this unfolding story. Here's the story only on five. I am proud to be a Memphis police officer. Um, I do, however, want to be treated fairly on the job. Memphis police officer David Clemens says he's facing discrimination and harassment because he's gay. I believe all city employees should be treated fairly based on the quality of work and not on their sexual orientation. He's filed this federal lawsuit which claims even lieutenants on the force have harassed him, targeted him, all because of his, quote, homosexual lifestyle, end quote. All happening, he says, after he became the LGBTQ liaison in fall 2014, to better foster relations between police and the community. And you can't do that. You can't treat people differently because they're gay. Clemens claims he was openly mocked after his engagement to another gay officer. A couple of the lieutenants at the police station um, got together with a group and watched the video at the police station and started making comments, negative comments, and laughing about. He says he's also been harassed on the job because of his religion. He's the COO of a church with openly gay members. He also claims he's been harassed for a disability that keeps him from shaving. He is not able to shave closely, and this has been known that he has this shaving profile, so he doesn't have to shave closely, and all of a sudden now he that's not good enough. Now, according to this lawsuit, Clemens has been suspended twice and even fired once, but rehired after another lawsuit. Today, we asked him more questions, but his lawyer would only allow him to read a three-sentence statement. Officer, and I want to continue my career as a police officer without any interruption or discrimination. 
And back live here at federal court, we're told the city and MPD cannot comment on pending matters. Our calls today to the city attorney's office were not returned. For now, we're live in downtown Memphis. Jerry Askin, WMC Action News 5. WMC Action News 5's Jerry Askin has that story from Whitehaven. Jerry? Holding signs and their voices loud and clear. No I'm getting a little weary. So I want to make a stand for my children. We watched as hundreds of protesters marched for hours up and down Elvis Presley Boulevard near Graceland. Some people trying to make a statement in a part of town that brings many tourists to Graceland. Locking hands and crossing the street, they sent a strong statement. The protest even went as far to the Whitehaven Plaza, about a half mile from Graceland. It's time. We do know several people were detained during the protest. Police were in full force, making sure everyone was safe. We want to, uh, we want to make sure that they have a good conduit to, to let us hear so that we can be better, so that the city can be better. Among the crowd of protesters, the family of Darius Stewart. I'm here today to, uh, you know, demand justice for my nephew. Stewart, who was 19, was shot dead by a Memphis police officer last year following a traffic stop. Stewart was seen on video fighting with the officer. The officer has not been charged and has since resigned from MPD. I see signs with their name on it, so they represent me. They represent the city. That, that they represent the city and the Stewart's family. So many people now praying for justice. WMC Action News 5's Jerry Askin joins us live from the Shelby County Courthouse with the breakdown on this lawsuit. Jerry? And Kanji and Jill, we got a copy of that federal lawsuit filed earlier today. Darius Stewart's family is suing the city of Memphis. Former police director Tony Armstrong and Connor Schilling, the officer who shot and killed Darius Stewart last July. Now, supporters surrounded um, Darius Stewart's family at a press conference here earlier today. Stewart's parents filing a lawsuit for $17 million. We do know Officer Schilling placed Stewart in the back of his patrol car as he verified Stewart's out-of-state warrants. But today's lawsuit claims Officer Connor Schilling was rough with Darius before he knew of any warrants. It also points out Schilling went against policy. We do know Schilling did face internal police charges for going against radio and handcuffing procedures, but Schilling has not been criminally charged. Video shows Stewart fighting with the officer. Connor Schilling has since retired from the MPD force and was awarded a full pension. They don't take their time and allow them to retire off a pension, a lifetime benefit for what? Yes, he has PTSD. How they think I feel? Mm. Come on. I Jeez. can't even get my life back together. Everybody else out here living. Represent this city, have decided at this point. And the city of Memphis cannot comment on pending legal matters, but did say they're confident in the policies, procedures, and training in place under police director Tony Armstrong. Now, coming up here at 6, we're putting together much more, and you'll hear reaction from Darius Stewart's father, all new on WMC Action News 5 at 6. For now, we're live downtown. Jerry Askin, WMC Action News 5. WMC Action News 5's Jerry Askin is live with this unbelievable story of survival. Jerry. Well, Kanji, as you mentioned, you know, Chris Dinkins says, simply put, he's happy and grateful to be alive. He's among the first few hires here at the Bass Pro Shops at the Pyramid here. And he has one word for the man police say pull the trigger. He wants to know why. I'm just really thankful to be alive, really. Chris Dickens, who you see here all bruised up, told me what happened to him Saturday as he was working at Bass Pro is a miracle. You know, I was just really thinking I could die right now. He's one of three men shot downtown and nearly killed, allegedly by Justin Welch, who police say was on a crime spree, ultimately running over and killing a Memphis police officer. I didn't honestly know how many times I had been shot, you know. Because I could just look down, there's blood everywhere. Investigators say Welch first shot two men who were sitting on the patio at Westies downtown having dinner. His next stop, Bass Pro, where he pulled up outside, driving a car police say he stole from this gas station earlier in the day. Pulled up, nothing really said, just, I could just see a gun in my face and... Pow, 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 pow. He said then Welch drove off. Dickens was outside getting shopping carts to bring inside when he told me he was shot three times. You see injuries here to his forearm, lower leg, and his hip. He ran behind the shopping carts trying to avoid the gunfire. Now he's crediting his cell phone in his pocket for saving his life. It's not iPhone. I dodged other boy, but it actually saved my life, you know, because that's what all of the doctors said. They said, you know, 
that could hit a serious, you know, something serious, and you could have bled out. Happy he's home now to recover, but angry a day at work ended with gunfire. There was no need for any of that, you know, for what he did, for, for who he shot, he took, you know, an officer's life. And in case you're wondering, yes, Chris Dickens plans to, re plans to return to work here at Bass Pro as early, he says, as today. For now, we're live downtown. Jerry Askin, WMC Action News 5. We begin with WMC Action News 5's Jerry Askin, who was at this very emotional vigil tonight. Jerry? And even late this hour, friends and neighbors are at this home showing support for this family after such a traumatic day. And a vigil wrapped up here in the past hour. It's been quite a day, an emotional day, a tough day, after nine people were killed, six were children. A circle of family and friends. You pray for me. They prayed, held candles, and grieved. We'll come together, Father. An emotional gathering at the place where nine people were killed when this South Memphis home caught fire early Monday morning. Six of them were children. Investigators say a faulty cord to an AC unit sparked the blaze in the living room. I'm at a loss for words. I um, feel like it's an out-of-body experience right now. We watched all day as family and friends brought teddy bears and balloons here, all as a Memphis fire t-shirt hangs on the front door. It's terrible. It's a harsh feeling. We also saw family outside Le Bonner Children's Hospital praying that eight-year-old Cameron would make it. The family told me for hours the young football star was on life support and fighting for his life. Ernest Jett is the child's grandfather. We all in prayer. Like I said, God. It's in his hand. Meantime, Chandra Hampton lived next door and saw how the burglar bars and security door made it harder to save this family. She told me she already has made some changes at her home in case of an emergency. We went through and rekeyed every swing gate that we had. So, and then we taped the keys to the wall. It'll be tough for this family. Walking by faith, that's all I can say. And they're praying for peace and understanding. Well, I believe it's in the good Lord's hand that he will make a way. Now, at last check, this family told me eight-year-old Cameron Jett is still fighting for his life in the hospital on life support. Just such a sad, sad story. Of course, we'll keep you all posted on his condition. For now, we're live in South Memphis. Jerry Askin, WMC Action News 5.